run out of money, didn't you, on on Commando in terms of the budget? Because the the ending was uh, was going to be a much grander uh, affair than it ended up being. Uh, yeah, th- that 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 really bothers me because uh, uh, you can see you can if you pay attention to the movie, you can sort of figure out what happened in there. What I originally wrote, uh, and again, people are confused in the script, but in the script we are saying that the the the, the general the the dictator in exile is living on one of the islands off of the California coast. There's a number of islands off the California coast. Santa Catalina is the best known. It's like a county. And mm. there's a town there, and people live there. Um, Santa Cruz Island was a military base that the U.S. Navy used for training. And they would have amphibious landings on that island, and they would have artillery targets for the Navy to shell. And my idea was, and written in the script was, and when it all turns to crap for the villain, the, uh, uh, the Bennett grabs a little girl, jumps in a speedboat to escape. Arnold jumps in another speedboat and follows. He shoots at the fleeing speedboat and hits a fuel line. Running out of fuel, Bennett looks around. He sees a beach, and he drives onto the beach. Arnold follows to the beach. But they are not aware that this is Santa Cruz Island, which is what the U.S. Navy uses for target practice. Now, earlier in the movie, when they're flying to the island, there's an interruption, and they say, attention, unidentified aircraft. You're approaching the U.S. Navy artillery range, Santa Cruz Island. It is a no-fly area. And the guy on the other end of that call is um, a very well-known actor from Aliens, right? Oh, Bill, uh, Bill Paxton. Yeah, that's one of his first parts. That is a setup for the audience to realize, oh, no, they're on that island. (laughs) So the final knife fight was going to be like Private Ryan. These two guys having a knife fight on Normandy Beach with the barbed wire and the concrete blocks with explosions all around them. Now, I'm I'm up in Vancouver on a location scout for The Running Man, another Arnold movie, which ended up not shooting in Vancouver. Uh, as it turned out. Uh, But I'm up there and I get a phone call from Joel Silver and he says, listen, I need you to dictate a new scene for the end of the movie. I go, what are you talking about? That scene on the beach, the knife fight, we couldn't do it on the beach. I said, what do you mean you couldn't do it on the beach? He says, I'll explain later, but it's, we're filming it in a basement. In a basement? He says, it's a long story. It's now in a basement. So rewrite it for a basement. Uh, what, uh, is, it a, uh, is it a set? He says, no, it's a real basement. Um, stand by. We're going we're gonna to email pictures of the basement to you. <laughs> so, they send, so they send somebody in the basement, and they email me pictures, and then they put, a tele- they put somebody on a telephone, an assistant, walking around the basement saying, okay, that picture of the stairwell, that's at one end. The other end is a, uh, is a, is a boiler, and there's a, a balcony. She's describing the basement to me. So now in Vancouver, I, in my hotel room, I'm rewriting the fight with the same dialogue, right? Yeah. But to accommodate, and, now, and I'm making up different ways to kill him. Like, uh, watch that first step. Like, I, I killed Bennett in five ways. Watch that first step. Let off some steam. They ended up yeah. using two of them, the electricity and the let off some steam. <laughs> yeah. now, it, now, it turned out the reason that they ran out of money was while we were in production, uh, our director saw a sneak preview of Rambo. And he comes back from the sneak preview on Rambo and says, they're killing a thousand guys in Rambo. We have to kill more guys. Now, I had written in the script a rather plausible cadre of professional mercenaries who were guarding this dictator in exile. And in the opening scene, you saw about seven or eight of them. And it was an ethnically mixed group of like mooks, Hmm. you know, you know, mercenaries of all nations. And we also saw them again when they had a little girl in a chair with a gag around her set, right? And just like Beverly Hills Cop, you figure somebody like this is a dozen guys on his payroll. That's what I wrote. It's for the plausible. Unbeknownst to me, in order to have like a bigger body count, um, they just, he decides to have somehow on, on a private island here, he has an entire army that he has transplanted from Central America. So now we have this, this kind of like basically blatantly racist trope of mowing down like hundreds of brown people instead of like a dozen 
you know, bodyguards of all ethnicities. Mm -hmm. uh, and he ends up spending four or five days on this thing. Now, there, there was a gunfight at the house that was written. And I did write the scene in the garden shed, you know, with the frisbee yes. cutting off the head. Cutting off yes. the head. And, and cutting off the head and the uh, and, and the machete joke. But this, like, mass extermination was, I was as shocked when I saw it as anybody else. And the money that went into that robbed the scene that was supposed to be the end of the movie. But what's really odd is you have that whole setup. You're approaching San Catalina, or the, the uh, Santa Cruz, you know, it's set up, mm. but it's not pay off. <laughs> yeah. Um, 